and I just like on a whim ordered them and they're like one of my favorite boots I own. I like leave them by my front door and just wear them all the time. What's up guys, this is Nick at stridewise.com and today I have a very special glass. It's glessed, I said glessed. Dude, I can be a glessed. <laughs> Tell me how to be a I have a very special guest here today, Mr. Ticho Blanco, uh, who is the co-host of the Stitch Down Shoecast, a very informative and entertaining podcast all about shoes. And also he runs Ticho Blanco Shoes, the Instagram, where he shows pictures of his feet every single day. And it's great. He's one of the smartest and most educated guys in, in footwear, and it's an honor to have you on today. Thanks for having me, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah you're, you're, you're welcome. Yeah. Most of this is probably the first time you've ever seen his face because he's a very mysterious gentleman, but I'm, I'm dragging him out uh, kicking and screaming into the public eye today. I thought I really did think it would make a lot of sense to just have me like standing on the table here, <laughs> like just my, you know, like from my knee down. That yeah, people know that would have made sense. Um, today we are talking about the most underrated boot brands. Um, this was when I when I had this idea, I immediately thought of a teacher because. Um, like I've talked to him before about uh, one of the brands on this table actually and I've said this is the most underrated boot brand ever and then he would mention a, a second brand that's even more obscure. He has in, entirely encyclopedic knowledge about uh, all the most popular and least popular uh, boot and footwear brands in the industry. With all that said, here are some boot brands that you should pay more attention to. We think they don't get enough love. Um, T-shirt, what's the first one? All right, so the first one I've got here, uh, Benzene Shoes from uh, Indonesia. So they're based in Bandung, uh, it's a workshop. They've got, I think like seven or eight guys working there. Number one thing that people are looking for from them are these Chelsea's. So it's a whole cut Chelsea, uh, which means that it's just one piece of leather for the entire upper here. Just one seam right in the back. Yeah, normally you'd see stitches uh, underneath the, the goring here. Yeah, most Chelsea's you'll see like a stitch right here, uh, so they can use two pieces. It's hard to get a, a nice big piece of leather like this, but when it can be done on a Chelsea like this, you end up with just such a comfortable fit. It just molds to your foot, it's like a sock. Uh, these are in an Indonesian wax flesh, okay, so Great for great for bad weather and everything like that. I leave these by my front door. It's hand welted, so what you end up with is just a really nice fit um, that breaks in super well over time. Uh, I've had these for almost two years. That they are crazy. I actually wore them today. I'm not wearing shoes right now. <laughs> to, those, to those of you that don't know, Indonesia is a, is a hotbed of boot activity, right? Like there's a. It's kind of a long story. I've done a few videos about it before on the channel um, that I'll, I guess I'll put a card up there. But yeah, there's a, there's a long and storied tradition of uh, traditional boot making in Indonesia um, that is uh, you know, tied to the history of Dutch colonialism. Again, very long story. But there are a lot of really, really good, uh, fantastic boot makers in Indonesia. This is not gonna be a video all about them, all about Indonesian boot makers, <laughs> but we just want to highlight Benzene as one of the, one of the, the less established ones, like uh, probably Cigar and Santalum. Maybe Junket and Texture, I feel like the, maybe the best known ones. Um, and, and Benzene is a bit more up and coming, but everyone's talking about them, which means they're underrated. Yeah, agreed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the next up, number two on the list, uh, Rider Boots. I think they're criminally underrated. Right now, the guys don't even have 5,000 followers on Instagram, it's, it's criminal, but these, Boots are really nice. So this is the, the Dundalk boot. Um, took me a long time to get my hands on it. The brand is not uh, like horse riding boots. It's founded by a guy called Ron Ryder. And uh, this is this really nice boot where, he, when I spoke to him, he told me that he thinks in like a boot store, he would like his boots to sit between like Red Wing and Alden, as far as like not super casual, not super dressy. But he sort of went a step further than that and he did this, he, he combined this sort of European look and like kind of last with more sturdy American construction is how he described it. So it's like, it's a it's a really nice boot. This is like rough out leather, reverso leather, they called it. I'm really crazy about them. You know Ron Ryder, don't you? I do, we've actually, uh, we've had Ron on the Suits on Shoecast actually two times now. Ron is an absolute legend. He has crazy expertise in fitting people in shoes. And so we had him on for a whole episode just talking about that. And he totally blew my mind, like changed my entire perspective on size and shoes and stuff. Uh, I actually have a pair of these two, um, a run that he did through uh, Leadberry shirts actually, which is like under their Tangier brand, uh, but it's the Ryder Dundalk. Mine are in like a dark olive. 
It's a great boot, man. I mean, this Reverso leather is super nice. It's a calf suede. It's been treated with like salmon oil, so it's- Yeah, there's fish oil in it, yeah. Like fish oil. It has like a little fishy smell, but um, it holds up. It's, it's basically waterproof. It just does excellent in bad weather, and it's a, just an awesome everyday boot. Yeah, it looks like it doesn't, it wouldn't fare too well in bad weather, but uh, it does. I have I have stained mine here, so I gotta figure out a way to get that out, but it's still, it's, it's very, very tough leather. Um, I was also gonna note these boots, like they used to have a store in, what was it, Virginia? Richmond, Virginia. Rich, in Richmond, Virginia. Um, and they had to close down the brick and mortar store and the boots are all made in Italy now. Anyway, the brand could really use some love. So definitely get some boots from them. They also have a Chelsea, I think that's pretty popular, but like, yeah, it's the, it's the Dundalk and the Chelsea are their most beloved boots and they deserve to be. So uh, yeah, all the links are in the description below. Make sure you check them out. All right, next up we got iron boots out of Guangzhou, China. Mm. So these, this is a small workshop in China. Uh, it's seven guys, it's run by this guy Kai, who is super eccentric. He is super passionate about the boots. He puts a level of thought into these things that is just next level. I mean, he thinks about things uh, that I don't that couldn't even possibly even describe what he's doing. Pro actually working on a project with him, a collaboration with with my friend Lars, who does Osmo boots out of uh, Norway. And so they're going to be making you know his designs using making, making boots using his uh, his last and patterns and stuff like that. And the level of obsessiveness between Lars and Kai for the angles of things, for you know the 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 temper of the leather and all yeah. that is just is just incredible. But What's great about these, they are fully handmade, uh, hand lasted, hand welted. They're even hand sewn in the outsoles. Um, and you're looking at a price point of like 650 to 700 for, um, I mean, this is a, a nice Italian horse hide that they've wow. completely hand dyed themselves. They just get it natural and then uh, hand dye it. They do a lot of cool hand distressing and stuff like that. Yeah. And you can, yeah, just go Iron Boots USA uh, on Instagram. You can just uh, order order MTO. It's like 650, 700. I forgot to mention earlier that uh, one, one of the uh befuddling aspects of a, some of these smaller Asian brands to uh, to Westerners is that uh, a lot of the time they don't have websites. So you have to just like go to their Instagram. If you like what you see, DM them and say, I'd like, I'd like a pair of boots, which sounds very difficult, like hard to trust, but uh, these brands have built up the uh, built up the trust and confidence in the public and you can be confident that you're gonna get not just a yeah. good pair of boots, but some of the best pairs of boots you, you ever like to get your hands on. Yeah, you, you have to do a little bit more work as a customer to kind of figure out what's available, what the options are, um, figure out the sizing and stuff like that. I mean, they'll help you if you send tracings and your sizing and stuff like that. Uh, a lot of people will DM me, uh, Teacher Blanco Shoes on Instagram. I help people with their sizing all the time, especially for benzene um, and iron boots as well, so. Yeah, anyway. and then you've, you've earned your boots once you've gone through all the rigmarole of getting them here. You know what, I think there is a certain joy in investing a little bit more upfront in yeah. the ordering process. <laughs> and there is like a little bit of a wait, right? You have to wait, you know, four or five months for them to show up. Yeah. And then they show up and you're like, oh man, I nailed it. Like I got everything right. It's, I chose all the, the details, you know, I don't know if you can see in here. I have like a customized heel pad. It says special crafted for Ticho Blanco. <laughs> Pretty cool. Okay, I love it. The next one, th this is maybe the silliest entry because this is the brand that I had the most people telling me that this was the most underrated brand. So maybe it's not underrated at all. But nonetheless, I did ask people their, their input as to what they consider the most underrated brand. Uh, and Helm got a lot of answers. Uh, Helm, I have three boots from them. Uh, they're all in storage right now, but here's lots of footage of me walking around in the, <laughs> the boots. <laughs> but uh, I kind of stupidly made three videos about Helm boots. And I say stupidly because none of them got that many views because they aren't quite as popular as uh, I would like them to be, or as, as they would like them to be, but they're, they're, they're a very cool boot brand. They're based in Austin. Um, a lot of the boots are made there in Austin. One of the things I like about them is they have like this white rubber midsole, which has like this white sort of like strip going through the sole of the boot, which gives like this really distinctive look and like, I wouldn't say more sneaker-like, but it makes it stand out in the, in the world of boots, right? I also have a discount code with them. Stridewise. <laughs> it's like 15%. If it works, I haven't checked it in like two years, but I'm pretty sure that still works. Oh yeah, and another thing is that they, uh, they're not, they're typically not Goodyear welted, they're Blake Rapid stitched. Sure. So that's another way they sort of stand out in this, in this world of boots. So they are a bit lighter than most Goodyear welted boots, but um, you can still resell them. So I think Blake <laughs> Rabbit itself is a pretty underrated boot construction. Yeah. That's what you're looking at here with uh, the riders as well. 
leads to a really nice lightweight kind of fit, but breaks in and is just as hard wearing as Goodyear Welt. So yeah, there's this. Yeah. You know, it's, it, it, I've been doing this for like three and a half years now, and now I look back at like all the horrible mistakes that I've made since I've been talking about boots. One of which is that you, you know, it's really hard to resole Blake stitch boots and like Blake rapid stitch boots, but actually like they're not, and a, a good, they're, they're a little bit harder, right? Like, you know, pretty much any color can redo a good year well. Uh, it'll, th there's a, a slightly small percentage of them will be able to resold Blake Rapid Stitch, but it can still be resold, you know? Yeah, yeah, if you're, especially for just pure Blake, yeah, you just have to find somebody who has the right machinery and stuff yeah. like that, so. But it, just it a, can be done. It can be done for sure. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, Parker, you wanna talk about Parker? Let's talk about Parker. All right, okay. Uh, next up, uh, straight out of Western New York, see, uh, you have him right here, uh, Parkhurst. Parkhurst, sounds terrible with my accent. Parkhurst. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm not sure it's much better with my Jersey accent. <laughs> but yeah, made it in Batavia, New York. It's Goodyear welted boots. You're looking at like low to mid 300s for these, a little mm. bit more for a made to order. Excellent quality for the price. And it's just a great everyday boot. I always say like the thing that gets overlooked in this space is people are always looking for these like spectacular, you know, gorgeous, crazy, beautiful boots that like maybe you don't want to wear every day, right? You're just, you're not trying to like completely stunt on everybody every day. Maybe you are. Maybe you are. <laughs> yeah, um, and also they're not super versatile when they're right. like that as well. You know, e even like a lot of like white boots and stuff, which are relatively traditional as far as aesthetic goes, they're, they're, they're still bulky, chunky, in many ways, loud it's boots. Extra, that like, yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's still a bit extra, which is yeah. totally fine. But yeah, for nice beta boots, pa Parkhurst is doing the same sort of thing, combining the dress boot, work boot type thing that, that more people are doing nowadays, and they do a really spectacular job of it. I'm fully aware that these boots don't seem like the very subtle sort of daily boots that a lot of people m might want them to be, you know, I, because th this is made of green kudu. Um, I have their Delaware boots as well, though, which, uh, a friend of mine is currently wearing because I've got a lot of friends with my shoe size and I try and respect my boots and get them worn when I when That's I don't very have time kind, to wear very, them. Very kind of you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. People in my in my normal life who are like, oh, you're like this boot guy, whatever, and they're like, well, what's what should I get? Like, how should I get into this? And I always send them to Parkhurst. It just is a great entryway into this whole game. It's you know cool leathers, but just really easy to wear. Yeah, it's yeah. Wearable, easy to get the sizing right. Yeah, that's and, a, that's and, a really good point. And made in the USA. Um, yeah, they're yeah. really they're fanatic about fanatical about uh, getting made in the USA, right? So like they'll I mean okay, this kudu is from CF Stead, but like they've got a lot of leathers from from Hoyne and from the US, but also like the uh, like like the leather you know midsoles and stuff are from from the US, like the eyelets are from the US, you yeah. know all, all this kind of stuff. And like Day Night is okay, that is from Britain, but like he imports what's it through a very little like family owned company just so he can, he can try and keep as much of his money in the US as he can while also using like really top end uh, materials and stuff. And I'll also say we had uh, Nicole Porter, who's the owner of Pops yeah. and Shoes, the factory where these are made in uh, upstate New York. We had her on the podcast. So if you want to hear a little bit more about the factory and her story a little bit, you can uh, check out that podcast. Yeah, episode. and I interviewed the founder, Andrew Cisco on my YouTube channel as well. People should check There's out. all this media yeah. you guys can consume if you wow. want to get super into this boot brand. Last thing, they have a split reverse vault as well on just about all of their shoes, so it's a tiny bit more water resistant. It's That's an underrated boot construction. Agreed. I think, yeah. yeah. More flexible than a, than a storm welt, nice and water resistant, and it gives it a little something extra. Next up, next most underrated, uh, Russell, also called Russell Moccasin, the brand. Uh, very, very underrated. They. It's a very small operation, um, but people are like, really like ob obsessively fanatic about this particular brand. Like it's really, really traditional moccasin style construction. A lot of the time the boots are used for hunting. There's a lot of pictures of them very heavily worn, uh, trudging around marshes and so on. Um, there's a lot of customization you can do with Russell. So like you can get up to three layers of leather in the vamp if you want for like some very old timey, but very, very effective waterproofing. Um, you can get uh, different layers of uh, insulation, like at 300 grams, 600 grams, like as much as you want. Um, I actually mentioned them in my best winter boots video a while back. There's also, they've got a bunch of different soles you can pick. They're really good quality boots. What do you think of Russell? Yeah, I think Russell's super cool. I've been thinking about getting a pair for a couple years. Mm. I think the, the double and triple vamp thing that you're talking about, what that, really ends up looking like is just your feet are surrounded fully by like two or three layers of like thick nice leather not like hard like not you know like outsole leather something like that just like nice soft leather 
and it's just you know, you're out in the woods, you're shooting birds, you're shooting deer, shooting a bow. I don't know. What do you guys do in Australia? <laughs> kangaroos? Yeah. Can you shoot? Can you hunt a kangaroos? Well, they're pests in a lot of places. Okay. So I don't know if you hunt them as much as you just like kill them. <laughs> I, I don't know if there's a difference between We're, those two things. Yeah, I guess but. you're right. Yeah, that's a conversation for another video. Yeah. <laughs> All right, best uh, kangaroo hunting tip. Best kangaroo hunter, yeah. yeah. Well, you need yeah. to get your kangaroo leather from somewhere. Um, yeah, I guess so. Russell boots, they are underrated. I think there's a couple of reasons they might be, they're relatively expensive, like usually a good 500 bucks for uh, these boots. More if it's going to have the triple vamp and everything, which is I think is worth shelling out for. Also, it can take a really long time to get them made. Like the last time I called them, and to be fair, it was like October, so they had that was like you know peak boot making season. But they said it'd be between twelve and uh, twenty weeks to get my boots, like five months, um, which is most people just don't are not interested in waiting that long for a pair of boots. But you get the nice feeling of supporting a very small business. It's tremendously intensively handmade. It's gonna come out and just be one of the most comfortable hardware boots that you're you're gonna have. Yeah, Russell are legit. All right, last one. This brand, we had a bit of a debate earlier because they're pretty obscure, this company, relatively obscure. Mm -hmm. Very few people have them. It's up to you if they're underrated or not. What's the brand? I don't know, I don't know what, yeah. <laughs> we can say, we can say what the meaning of the word underrated. <laughs> These are some cool boots, and, yeah. and uh, that, that's really what it boils down to. Whoa. Yeah, this is the big one. These are serious. What is the brand, teacher? So these are our clinch boots. Uh, clinch. From Brass Tokyo. If you go on Instagram, it's at Brass Tokyo. Um, they're made, uh, made in Japan, handmade, hand-lasted. This is a natural horse butt. Uh, smell, I mean, it smells, it smells really good. It's, yeah. uh, it does smell really good. It smells nutritious. Yeah, I mean, this is a boot for somebody who is looking for something special, who's looking for something different than pretty much anything else you can get that's gonna age incredibly. I go on the Brass Tokyo Instagram and see what these look like worn in. Put, they put a lot of thought into how these things are gonna age, how it's gonna look, the creasing, the rolls. Um, and some of the worn pairs that the guys from Brass Tokyo own are insane. And they look so good worn in that people are clamoring to spend upwards of a thousand to two thousand dollars for these. Yeah, so we, we've uh, we've actually kind of traversed the globe in this video, haven't we? We've, we've talked about Indonesian boots, we've talked about Chinese boots. Uh, Japan boots are in a, a different category, you know? I mean, it's an extraordinarily developed country, of course, um, but why would you say the Japanese boots uh, have, have such a strong niche in the world of boot making? I think it's just their attention to, to detail, their attention to, um, to the style. They take a lot of influence from Americana, from things like that. And they, they put it right back into the product and just make just, I think, incredible, beautiful things. Yeah, um, even like the finishing here, this is a, you know, a woodsman's, woodsman's heel, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, like the way that it like kind of slips in. It's done so kind of perfectly. This is done by hand, but you'd, you'd, you'd think that some machine like cut it out to be like, to be this perfect. But all this stuff is done by hand. Uh, the craftsmanship is phenomenal. The, ingre the uh, components are phenomenal as well. And uh, you get boots that are a great embodiment of uh, decades of skill and craftsmanship on the part of the maker, and uh, that's what makes people really clamor for boots of this quality, that you're, you're wearing the maker's soul as well. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to properly rate a boot maker's soul, I think. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, the most underrated boot brands. That was pretty fun. Um, there's a written article as well uh, in the description below. Uh, I put in a couple other entries on that one, but um, these, this is the video. Click through if you want to see more. Um, we've got some links if you want to buy them. Uh, and where can people find you, Teacher? Yeah, you can uh, follow at Teacher Blanco Shoes. If you have any questions about any of this stuff, shoot me a DM. Happy to help you out. Um, you can listen to the Stitch Down Shoe Cast. It is pretty much just like this, except you don't have to look at my face. And, um, <laughs> Yeah, that's pretty much it, man. Cool, all right. Well, thanks for coming out. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. All right, cool, there it is. All right, all right. thanks. Uh, subscribe if you just kind of wound up here. Very good channel. <laughs> <laughs> what do you stare at when you're doing this? What, what? It's the lens? Stare right at the lens. Just dead into it? Yeah.